30 million years ago, a monster roamed the landscape. Well, we're talking about one of the most ferocious animals that probably ever walked the earth. This was the biggest beast to live in North America since the dinosaurs. Look at the size of that skull. Look at all those teeth in there. There is no animal like this anywhere. See, if this thing's biting over the front, but this creature's true character has baffled the world's best paleontologists. It might look like a pig, but it's more vicious than a grizzly bear. One thing is for sure, this beast was so frightening, some call it the pig from hell. Prehistoric America, 30 million years ago, the dawn of the Oligocene Epoch. The earth was cooling, and as temperatures dropped, the landscape began to change. In what would someday be Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota, tropical forests gave way to a radically different environment. As forests disappeared, animals had to adapt to a dangerous new world of wide open spaces with nowhere to hide. A world where there was only one way to survive, run for your life. Camels become adapted for open country, horses become adapted for open country, and you have to be able to escape your predators by being fast runners. As prey animals became harder to catch, predators also had to change. In this arms race, it took speed and jaw power to stave off starvation. There were nimravids, cat-like creatures with saber teeth, which could kill with one quick bite. And the fearsome hyena don with its lethal jaws. There was another animal stalking these deadly grasslands. Scientists call it the entelodont. More than a meter at the shoulder, weighing in at 270 kilos, entelodont was the Oligocene's number one menace. Entelodonts, I mean, they were really bad looking animals that only a mother could love. If you were another animal on the landscape, I mean, you saw one of these things, I think you'd go in the opposite direction. Paleontologists have always looked at the entelodont's sheer power with reverence, but its behavior is one of evolution's most puzzling enigmas. Was it a pure hunter, or did it use its battle tank body simply to protect itself from other predators? Between the biting and the chewing, you wanted to stay away from the business end of this animal. Just look at it. Look at the size of that skull. Look at this, all those teeth in there. There is no animal like this anywhere. Entelodont's name means perfect toothed. Its teeth were driven by a perfect system, which gave this creature a ferocious bite. Its jaw power came from two massive cheekbones that leveraged the muscles and supercharged them, driving the deadliest jaws of its time. Jaws that could open 90 degrees and could clamp down harder than a hippo's or a crocodile's. This beast was bioengineered to bite. But what it was eating and why remains a mystery. Entelodonts have no modern relatives, no modern close relatives. So it makes it a challenge for a paleontologist to figure out how they made their living. What would an animal with such an enormous flange on its face, such enormous teeth, be eating? What was it doing? 
entelodont fossils first caught the attention of scientists in the 1850s. They decided it was a bear-like creature. But then grooves in the teeth suggested that entelodonts were digging for plant roots, meaning that they literally ate like pigs. Today, scientific analysis has confirmed that the entelodont's closest living relative is the pig. But while this creature has some pig-like features, scientists have struggled to place it in any one category. In many ways, they're analogous to pigs, but they're also analogous to bears. They're also analogous to hyenas. Nobody's thought about these animals before. And there's no animal alive today that is a direct comparison to entelodonts. The lifestyle of entelodonts has provided paleontologists with difficult questions. A new generation of scientists is looking at the entelodont to determine why this plant-eating animal had teeth like a carnivore. Entelodont jaws held four different kinds of teeth, canines, incisors, premolars, and molars at the back. The back molars were ideal for grinding vegetation, but it's hard to imagine that the entelodonts would have needed such lethal canines and incisors just to grab plants. Then, in 1993, a discovery suggested that entelodonts were chewing on much more than plant roots. We've got a set of vertebrae here. You can see the neural spines are evident. For over 15 years, this quarry site in the badlands of South Dakota provided paleontologists with a multitude of fossils from the animals that shared entelodonts' world. Right. There it is. First time out in 33 million years, huh? 30 million years ago, this place was a watering hole crowded with rhinos, camels, and early horses. Well, we have some articulated ribs. Scientists also found one of the largest collections of entelodont bones in the history of North America. So many that they dubbed the site the Big Pig Dig. Fossil hunters also found the prehistoric equivalent of fingerprints, entelodont teeth marks, all over the bones of the biggest and fastest animals of its time. Well, these represent bite scars along the dorsal margin of this rhinoceros skull. Well, what could make these marks? If we take an entelodont skull, we see that the premolars are widely spaced apart. So when we lay that over the top here, lo and behold, they're matching up quite well, suggesting that this animal is at least a likely candidate for uh, biting through the top of the skull of this rhinoceros. The dig presented key evidence that entelodonts didn't just eat plants, suggesting that they were less like modern pigs and more like fearsome prehistoric predators. If we look at the front of the mouth of an entelodont, it's got a very strong bite that's interlocking. The teeth come together like that. The tips of the teeth don't touch each other, so it's not really specialized for cropping vegetation. In addition to interlocking, the front teeth angle slightly forward, giving entelodonts the ability to grab and nip, something plant eaters don't need, but meat eaters do. The incisors and the canines would have been perfectly capable of tearing a bite out of a carcass. But dentition isn't the only reason paleontologists believe the entelodont was a dedicated carnivore. Under Wyoming's rugged terrain, scientists are finding more and more bones bearing the signature of entelodont's powerful jaws. Across the Great Plains of North America, 
scientists are investigating a prehistoric pig. Entelodont has the teeth and jaws of a fierce predator, but its long, thin legs and cloven hooves suggest it might not be a very good hunter because it couldn't use them to grab prey. Who was this beast, nicknamed the pig from hell? One veteran fossil hunter believes he's found the answer. I look at him as an attack predator, that he was top of the line predator, just like the lion is today in Africa, and just like T-Rex was in the late Cretaceous. Paleontologist Kent Sundell has great respect for this creature's power to kill. At Wyoming's White River Formation, he's found what he thinks is ultimate proof of its hunting prowess. 25 million years ago, this was a flat plain near a river where horses, camels and rhinos gathered to drink. Fierce carnivores, such as hyenodons and saber-toothed cats, were also drawn here. It was the perfect spot to ambush and kill the unwary prey animals. In 1998, Dr. Sundell found the mangled skeletons of seven miniature camels jumbled together. All the bones had been gnawed and six were missing their hind quarters. In theory, they could have been the victims of several predators, like the hyenodon or early saber-toothed cats. But when Dr. Sundell matched up the teeth from White River's meat eaters with the bite marks on the camel's bones, only one fitted. Bite marks alone don't prove these camels were killed by an entelodont, but where the bite marks are might be a clue. On the camels, I show they were bitten in the back of the skull and at the top of the neck. He gets next to that prey and he tries to get a punctured wound through the cranium. Dr. Sundell believes this is the mark of a true predator, which kills before it eats. And hundreds of miles away, in Ohio, there's more evidence that entelodonts could have hunted. Evidence from a scientific journey no one's ever taken before. Inside an entelodonts 30 million year old head. At Ohio University, anatomist Larry Whitmer uses a CT scan to electronically model the brain surfaces of prehistoric animals. When he modeled his first entelodont brain, he noticed something unusual. This animal's eye sockets face right back out at us. What that tells us is that this animal almost certainly had binocular vision, meaning the visual fields overlapped, which allowed them to have some depth perception. Larry Whitmer believes Entelodont's eyes help to identify it as a predator. There's a decent chance that this animal has binocular vision as a predatory adaptation to actually spot prey and actually judge their distances, which you might actually expect an ambush predator to have. So it could actually jump at the right speed and the right distance in order to capture its prey. But Entelodont's bizarre bioengineering doesn't inspire confidence that it could run and jump. Its body bones are light compared with its massive skull. But in fact, entelodonts easily carried their enormous heads without tipping over, using powerful packs of muscle bulging from the top of the spine to the legs and from the back of the head to the tail. The animal's head 
was cantilevered out in front of its body with these ligaments that ran from these spines down to the skull. It had full muscle all along either side here, and it had muscles coming from the sternum up to the jaw down here. Massive muscles carried its oversized head. But to bring down a camel, it would also have to run fast. And that's when the Entelodont's agile, lightweight body may have paid off. There's just one problem. When a predator catches its prey, it relies on its claws to grab it and bring it down. Armed with only cloven hooves, there is no way the Entelodont could have captured a fleeing camel. Or is there? It must have been doing something right, because there's compelling evidence that plenty of large mammals ended up as an entelodont's lunch. Well, it looks like there's a lot of bones coming out along here, and right here we have a really large uh, limb bone. And we found evidence that entelodonts have bitten into all sorts of bones, including rhinoceros bones. They've been biting into camels. We found evidence that they are biting into the long bones of rhinos. So the bite so, mark that we see are these two. This would be... Kent Sandell believes White River's camel skulls reveal how a cloven-hooved predator captured its prey. He runs up. He gets next to that other prey and he tries to get a punctured wound through the cranium or into the very back of the neck. And then the long snout that I move around. Entelodont expert Scott Foss disagrees with Kent Sundell's scenario. I, I, can get close enough to. I doubt an entelodont used its teeth in order to capture other prey. It probably used its larger bulk and ability to accelerate, to just run into the animal, knock it over. Once I had that animal knocked over, then the teeth can go into business, then the jaw goes into business, and it could crush whatever it went into. And it probably bit the animal right there in the head. Entelodont had all the tools necessary to kill prey animals. But there is more to the job of hunting than just the kill. A top flight predator must have the ability to find and ambush its quarry. To understand this part of the process, science needs a fossilized window into an entelodont's world. What would we see if we could follow in an entelodont's 30 million year old footsteps? At a fossil site in Nebraska, that's exactly what scientists have done. And these footsteps have led them on the trail of the creature's hunt for food. Northwest Nebraska, home to Toadstool Geologic Park, one of America's more remote tourist destinations, and a treasure trove for anyone fascinated by life's ancient past. Okay, here's our heel pad. Mm -hmm. Toe, toe, center hoof, which bears most of the weight, the middle toe. So that makes this a very nice rhinoceros print. 30 million years ago, these solid rocks were muddy stream banks, where migrating animals left their footprints, still preserved in toadstools rocks. Well, once we get it clean, it's a very nice rhino. Weigh in anywhere around five, six, seven hundred pounds. Dave Nixon has spent over 25 years analyzing the fossilized animal tracks of Toadstool Park. On the first slabs over there. He pours water on 30 million year old tracks 
to make them more visible. He can then interpret the animal's behavior. And he's walking at a deliberate pace, but not excited until he gets to this point. He starts to become stuck in the mud and shows quite a bit of emotion here because he really kicks. <laughs> lands here and he's out of the mud but he puts another leap in and the third bound takes him out of our exposure and we're seeing excitement if not fear and if you're a herbivore somebody always wants you for lunch the rocks reveal that something was following the rhinos we also have some smaller tracks. They look really tiny until you realize they're the tips of the toes. And what we have is an entelodont. The entelodont tracks at Toadstool Park give experts like Dave Nixon an unparalleled opportunity to understand.